when he loaded his Kalashnikov, in that moment I I said, okay, this is it. I'm done. I, I'm not going to survive. I didn't even want to look him in the face anymore. I just turned my back to him and uh, I just waited for him to kill me. It's strange how, how the brain reacts to that. You arrive to a certain point where you have uh, an acceptance of, of your own death. Like you're just waiting there to die. As a young man growing up in Milan, Italy, Marco De Lauro wanted to share the stories of world events through the lens of a camera. I was very curious about geopolitics and about what was happening around the world, and I decided to be a conflict photographer. On September 11, 2001, the terrorist attacks that changed the world became a life-changing event for Marco. In the exact moment, the first tower collapsed. And I saw it on TV, and I couldn't believe it. I remember I had goosebumps all over my body. I immediately realized that most likely the US would invade Afghanistan. And I decided I wanted to go there. After requesting assignment to cover the story in Afghanistan, Marco is turned down by the Associated Press. I asked them to uh, go to Afghanistan and they say, no, I mean, unfortunately, we have all our big photographers going there, so we don't, we are not interested in hiring you. I went to my father and I asked him if he could uh, lend me some money to go on my own. I booked a plane ticket from Italy to Uzbekistan and then I drove to Tajikistan and I decided to get into Afghanistan from the opposite side from where the entire world media community was trying to get in, which was Pakistan. With the Taliban regime denying access to journalists, Marco joins a group of Westerners who sneak into the country by crossing the Afghan mountains. In early October, they arrive in the Panjshir Valley north of Kabul, making Marco Dolaro one of the first journalists inside Afghanistan after September 11th. At that point, he places another call to the Associated Press. And they say, hey guys, you know, I'm here. Where are all your big photographers? And so they hire me uh, for a very good amount of money, which was unusual because uh, uh, it was a unique case in, in the sense that they really needed me. There were no one else there. And at that time, the Associated Press gave me a flag jacket, an armored vest. Even though I have to say it looked extremely safe, uh, it took me a while to get used to the idea of, of wearing it. Uh, I remember having this uh, flag jacket sitting there in my room in, in, uh, in the Panjshir Valley for a few days and every morning I was going out and I wasn't really wearing it. In the days after arriving in Afghanistan, Marco begins working with and photographing the Afghan people, along with a group of Mujahideen fighters that are planning an attack to liberate the city of Kabul from the Taliban forces controlling it. I spend days recording daily life in the Panjshir Valley women and children living in villages, Mujahideen preparing for the battle. As the day of the battle arrives, Marco places a call to his editor and tells him that he will be joining the Mujahideen forces during the attack. He told me, uh, Marco, don't go with the first line. Uh, always stay in the second one because the first line is the one they're going to get ambushed. And I remember that because it was one of my first conflicts and because I was uh, under such so much pressure and stress, 
that I decided to go with the first line anyway, even though my editor suggested not to do so. And at that time, uh, one of my colleagues from the Associated Press, she said to me, you have to wear that flag jacket. The offensive is gonna start, it's gonna be extremely dangerous. You know, you better have that. The flag jacket may uh, save your life. We started very early in the morning. I was with a group of Mujahideen of about 20 people. We were walking towards Kabul in a line in the countryside. And I was the last one on the line when suddenly uh, Taliban came out from both sides of the road, right and left. And they start shooting into the group of Mujahideen with machine guns. And at that point, I didn't even think for a second, just turn my back to them and start running as fast as I could. I heard two Taliban shooting and, and, and running after me. And I hide in one of those irrigation canals next to the fields. And I was so terrified and, and was so panicking that uh, I then decided to get out of the canal. As soon as I get out of it, I found those two Taliban just in front of me. He put me on a wall and uh, I just turned my back to him and I waited for him to shoot me. I, I felt in that moment almost like if a truck has uh, run through me in the street. But the impact was so violent because the shooting happened so uh, close range that I completely lost uh, conscience. I basically woke up in the hospital and the ceramic plate inside my flag jacket saved me. I'm very happy to be alive. I love life and enjoy life so much. Life is a real gift to me. And I'm glad that uh, I was wearing that flag jacket with those ceramic plates that day. It was the best decision of my life. And it's such a simple decision that saved my life. So.